Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about accessories when it comes to event photography. I'm not going to go into great detail about my lenses or my camera, uh, that's for another video. But instead today I want to talk about just a few little tools that I use when I'm shooting events that I've been using for years that I find to be invaluable. But before we do that, let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel. You know how to do that right here on YouTube, just subscribe to my channel and join my group on Facebook, Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. You're going to love this group, it's Facebook dot com slash pro photo talk with Boo Ray and it's just me and a couple of thousand other photographers uh, each day throwing out ideas throwing out challenges to each other and trying to get better at our craft so please be sure and join all right let's get started the first thing I wanted to do with this video was make sure that I wasn't highlighting anything that was new so I'm only going to show you today things that I've been using for years and years and years. Now, these are tried and true accessories that I use every single time that I shoot. Uh, the sort of thing really that I can't live without, you know, like if, if I think one of them's gonna break, I replace it immediately. Um, they're not necessarily big fancy things, sometimes just small things, but they will make your life easier if you are shooting events or if you're shooting on location. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing we've got to talk about is my belt because it is the lifeblood of what I do. And my belt is actually made by Spider Holster. I, for years, was using a Black Rapid system with the two uh, straps and I carried two cameras. And I didn't like it because I, it was trying to manage the two cameras all the time just became a bit cumbersome for me. You know, both hands always having to work those cameras. And I really wanted something where I could just take my camera and stick it on my hip. And just have it hang there the way that a, a carpenter would put a hammer on his hip. I even went to Home Depot one day and I, got, I took my camera and I got a couple of guys at Home Depot and I was like, you know, can we figure out a way to make this camera hang on a belt? And we really couldn't come up with a good method. And then this company, Spider Holster, came along and they introduced the Spider Holster. And I, I bought it like the first day that they released it and I have never regretted it. I have said many times that I would give up a lens in my bag before I would give up my Spider Holster because it's just a part of me when I'm going to shoot. So. Here's the side of the spider holster right here, and this is where the camera goes, and it racks into the side of the spider holster here. Now, you might think to yourself, wow, that spider holster really is in good shape, right? Look how pretty and nice it is. This is actually a new spider holster. Here's my old one. <laughs> so, and I'm very big on full disclosure. I'm, uh, I'm, I consider myself a very ethical person, a very honest person. So whenever I'm talking to people or, or making videos, um, I always like to reveal the truth about where things come from, uh, So even if it's not a big deal. And I'll tell you the truth. I didn't pay for this spider holster. Spider holster gave this to me for free. I didn't ask for it. They offered it. Uh, they said, hey, would you like a new spider holster? Because I was speaking and I was speaking at Imaging USA and there were going to be 900 people in the audience and I was going to be wearing my spider holster. And I guess they decided that it would look better if I had a new one instead of the old one. So they sent me this one for free. And if they hadn't sent me this one, I would not have bought a new one. Not because I don't like the spider holster, spider holster, but because my old one still worked. As beat up and tore up as it was, it still works as good as it day, did the day that I bought it. So I would still be wearing that beat up one if Spider Holster hadn't been so nice and, and sent me a new holster. So I love this holster. Now one of the things that I do if you see me with this holster and my camera racked to it is I don't actually use it properly. Okay, if you look at my camera and the way I've got the Spider Holster set on the bottom, it's actually supposed to be flipped. The uh, part that attaches is supposed to be coming to the front of the camera and it's supposed to hang on your hip a different way than the way that I hang it. If you look at the way that I hang it, <clears throat> it's kind of sticking off at an angle. <clears throat> the folks at Spider Holster are not real happy that, <laughs> that I do that. Uh, they saw me do that once and they said, hey, that's not the way it's supposed to be and uh, we can't necessarily guarantee that that's safe and I totally understand that. But the truth is, by putting it that way, I can pull it off my hip in one smooth motion and put it back in one smooth motion. If you put it on your hip the way that they designed it to be put on your hip, there's kind of a little bit of a twist that you have to make before you pull it off. And I didn't like that twist. I like being able to just grab it and pull it off. Uh, the truth is, I, I like to feel like a, a gunslinger in the Old West when I pull my camera off my hip. So that's really what that's about. And so don't necessarily do as I do, uh, do as I say, or rather as Spider Holster says, and hang it on your hip the correct way. Now my belt is spider holster, but on my belt, I carry three bags. My first bag is a catch-all bag, and this bag is fantastic and so good that I've come close to actually putting it 
on my regular belt like when I go on vacation because I'm so used to having it there. Uh, it's got a little slot in the front where you can put your cell phone. If you've got a really long cell phone, you, it, you might not feel so safe with it going there. Uh, so I started taking my long cell phone and sticking it into the slot that's on one of my bigger bags. Uh, but it's got a little slot in the front. It's got a little deal on here that you can use for clipping your keys if you're worried about losing your keys or something like that. It's got plenty of pouches on the inside. I keep uh, two backup cards in here. Um, I keep a gray card in here. I keep uh, business cards in here. And this is where I put my keys because I can zipper it close and my keys will be safe when I'm on the beach. I don't have to worry about losing them. And then the back pouch here is where I keep my water bottle. So I have a water bottle in here, my keys, my phone, everything I need is in here. And I also keep a couple of gels in here in case I want to do some gel effects. All of them tucked right in this bag. And this bag is provided by Think Tank. And this is, I bought this. Uh, Think Tank and I do not have any sort of relationship. All my Think Tank stuff is purchased by me. And uh, this bag is fantastic. And every bag I have is a Think Tank bag. That's not to say they're absolutely the best bags, but they just seem to be the bags I gravitate to. My bag that I use for my vacation, uh, carrying my vacation camera and gear, is also a Think Tank bag. They, they do a really good job with designing their bags and staying one step ahead of everybody else and understanding what features are good for a photographer. So the second bag that I have is my long bag. Uh, and this is for my long lens, my 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And you can actually extend this bag on the bottom, there's a zipper here. And if you unzip this, you can make the bag even longer. There's a rain hood built into the bag in case you get rained on, you can cover your lens. And I use this for holding my long lens. And then this is my short lens bag and it does everything the long lens bag does, except of course that it's for a short lens. So this is where I keep the two lenses that I carry. I have a 24 to 70 millimeter on my camera. I have a 16 to 35 in the short bag and I have a 70 to 200 in the long bag. Now, if I was doing this all over again today, the only thing I might would change, as a matter of fact, I think, you know, I, I might just go ahead and do it anyway. I mean, I never really thought about it until I was describing it for this video, but um, it would probably be better just to have two long bags because there are times if you have like the, um, because the lenses are configured a certain way, say you've got the long lens on and you want to go to the short lens. Well, you can't put the long lens in the short bag. So you've got to take the long lens off, put it in the, this bag, take the medium lens out, put it in this bag, take the short lens. You see what I'm saying? If you had two long bags, then it wouldn't matter. You could put anything into either bag. So um, I think, right, that might be an actual good idea is if you were going to do this fresh and new, instead of having the medium bag, just have two long bags and that way you can put anything you want into either bag. Yeah, that's a plan. The next little thing that I carry with me everywhere is this right here. I carry one on my vacation bag. I carry one on my, on my belt at all times. Uh, it's made by a company called Carson, but they're not the only ones who make them. There's different companies that make them. And it's just a, a cleaning cloth for when you've got to clean your lens. And I like the way that it tucks nice and neat inside this little foam doohickey. They make some that are like a little baggy. And, and because it's not stiff, it's not as easy to get the deal in there. So that's why I'm a big fan of the Carson one. And I keep it hanging right on the front of my belt, clipped usually, right about there. And then it's right there at my right hand. So anytime I need a clean cloth, I can just grab it real quick and clean my lens. Very handy to have. Now we get to what may be the most asked about piece of equipment that I own. And it is this, my Hoodman Loop. I love this Hoodman Loop for so many reasons. The great thing about the Hoodman Loop is when you're working on the beach and you have to look at a picture on the back of your camera, you need to review something. Well, because it's so bright, a lot of times you really can't see the back of your camera very well. And that's where the Hoodman Loop comes into play because you can put it right over the top of your screen. It blocks out all the light and you get a nice, clean, close-up look at your picture. But here's the thing about the Hoodman Loop that makes it indispensable for me. It has a diopter right here. You can dial in the power of the Hoodman Loop to match the power of your reading glasses. Now, if you're young, this doesn't matter to you because you have perfect vision all the time and everything about you is perfect and you never have a problem. But if you're over the age of 40, you're probably wearing reading glasses and then you know as well as I do that sometimes when you're trying to look at the back of your camera, especially if you're trying to make sure you've got a tight, tight, sharp focus, you can't see it quite as well as you'd like to see it. Well, the Hoodman Loop will fix that for you because you dial this into your power of your reading glasses and then when you put this over the camera and look at the picture, you have got a picture right here up on your face, perfectly, brilliantly sharp, thanks to the diopter. And what I did was, I took mine and I went to Home Depot and I bought one of those things that janitors use for holding their keys. 
So my loop just hangs on my kit all the time. And anytime I need to look at my camera, I can just pull it out, look at my camera, and then let it go. And it goes right back. Uh, it's traditionally something that's used for video, I think, more than for photography. But if you wear reading glasses, it really is indispensable because it's so much more annoying to have to put your reading glasses on every time you want to look at your camera. It's so much quicker just to pull that loop up, take a look, and then put it away. I love it. All right, the last piece of gear that I want to talk about is my Dim Flip It, spelled D E. MB and Dim is the name of the guy who makes it uh, and this is the Dim Flip It and it is my bounce card. And there's lots of different bounce cards you can get out there. Uh, Rogue, uh, the Rogue Flash Bender is another bounce card. It's a pretty good bounce card. Matter of fact, I, can, I have a Rogue Flash Bender in my kit as my backup card because you can do things with that that you can't do with the Flip It. But for me, over the years, 10 years of doing this, uh, I've tried them all and I keep coming back to this card for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's designed specifically to go on the long end of the flash see not on this not on the back side not back here but on the long end and this is the side that you want it on because if you're bounce flashing and your flash is pointed forward like this if you're bounce flashing then you're gonna be doing stuff like this right you're gonna be bouncing off the wall over here and you want this card to throw some light forward so if you've got a flat if you've got a card here this doesn't help you you want the here so when I'm shooting I'm working like this it doesn't matter if the long side is going up it, it does, that doesn't matter. As long as the light's going up, it doesn't matter which way the flash is turned. But by putting it this way, it fixes it so that I can do this. And now I can bounce light off that wall and throw light forward. And this card, because it's on a hinge, makes it very easy. I can throw, if I just want to add a little light forward or a lot, or if you do this, it'll really throw some light forward. So it makes it really easy to make quick adjustments. And the best thing about the hinge is you can just pop it out of the way and not use it because probably 90% of the time I don't use the card at all. I'm bouncing on the walls behind me and I don't need the card at all. But when I go to do something like table shots, if I'm taking a lot of pictures of little groups of people just in a row, boom, 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 then I'll pop this thing up like this, go like this, or maybe go to the side like this and just fire them off and get tons of pictures and then it's back out of my way. It's also attached with Velcro, so you can actually pull this off and replace it with another card. So if you want to put a black card on it and use it as a flag, you could do that as well. They also, it comes with a, um, I don't have mine on here, but it comes with a little plastic diffuser that you can put in front. So when this is popped up, you can have a little diffuser here to diffuse your light going forward even more. I carry it, I almost never use it because it's so rare that I'm actually using my, my flash in this configuration that I don't, I don't really need it that, that much. It helps a little bit with diffusing the light, but for what I'm using it for, I really don't need that much more diffusion. But it is a nice option if you really want to diffuse the light even more. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful card. I love it, and I believe you can get them on Amazon. Uh, the Dim Flip It. So that's it. Those are just a few of the accessories that I use every single time I leave the house with my kit. Uh, they're not fancy. They're just tried and true, used over hundreds of weddings, hundreds of events, hundreds of sessions on the beach, and I have found that they are just indispensable to me. I would not think of having a kit that did not have all of those things in it. Don't forget to join my Facebook group, facebook.com slash talk with Boo Ray and subscribe to this channel, okay? And listen, let me know. You want to see some more videos? You want something in particular? All you have to do is tell me and I will certainly try and make something special for you. And be sure and listen to my wonderful, wonderful podcast, Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Every single week we talk about what's happening new in photography. Uh, we talk about popular culture and we really have a good time. It's a great way to kill 30 minutes to an hour when you're sitting there and doing your editing or you're driving to a job, uh, listening to it in the car. Photobomb is the name of the podcast and we've been around for three years and it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.